Disneyland Park in Paris, just like all the other Disney parks around the world, has a lot of cancelled or proposed projects that never came to be. In the other two episodes of this series, I explored some of these projects, from a Little Mermaid dark ride in Fantasyland to a Tower of Terror hybrid in Frontierland. I highly recommend you watch those videos after this one, as there are some great projects over there. Today, we will dive into, once again, the Disneyland Park, as chosen by you in a Twitter poll. Oh boy! Hi everyone and welcome to the Main Street News. If you're new to the channel and are interested, make sure to subscribe and join our community on Twitter and Discord. Links are in the description. We also have a Patreon page if you want to support what we do even more. Now, let's go into it. When you walk into the park, you find yourself in a turn-of-the-century American town, inspired by Walt Disney's childhood town of Marceline, Missouri. What might surprise you is that during the development of the resort, a new Main Street was considered, this time being based around the 1920s with jazz, gangsters, and what especially interests us, an elevated tram. There were several iterations of this idea, the first ones would have it go along the right side of Main Street giving guests a way to escape the rain, since the arcades weren't included as of that time. The second iteration would have the trams go inside Discovery Arcade, the one on the right, and while riding, guests could look inside several windows showcasing cities from the future as Victorians imagined them. The trams would lead guests into Discoveryland, so this would make the transition from a Victorian town into the steampunk future of Discoveryland quite seamless. While this transportation method or attraction was cancelled, you can still see in the park some parts that ended up getting built, most notably the paintings recreating the Victorian cities of the future, which can be found in Discovery Arcade. I made a full video on this main street that never was, so make sure to check it out if you're interested. We can now take a ride in the elevated tram, as the next attraction would be found in Discoveryland, a land of the future as seen from the eyes of great visionaries. We all know that the land features an incredible coaster, Space Mountain, but what if I told you that there were plans for another one? That's right, at the back of Discoveryland by the side of Star Tours, guests would find the Spark Gap coaster. By looking at these plans, we can see that this was still in the plans quite late, probably even after the park's opening, as Space Mountain had already been transformed from a full-on pavilion to just the coaster we know today. Also, in this plan we can see another never built project, this time a restaurant that will be found at the entrance of the land, and based around Jules Verne. Let's go back to Spark Gap, it would feature a vertical ascent into a loop drop on what would be a maglev track. The attraction would be themed around electricity and magnetism, and guests would go around three steampunk pillars. While the attraction ended up being scrapped, it's impossible not to notice the similarities with Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril, which seems to have a very similar layout, so it's quite possible that management scrapped this idea in favor for Indy. Let's now go to Fantasyland. This part of the park is known for having a lot of attractions. It is, in fact, the land with the most rides in the park, and early on, Imagineers were designing one more, but this time, a little different. While you are accustomed to smaller dark rides and flat rides in Fantasyland, a completely different experience was being planned. Similarly to the original Disneyland in Anaheim, Euro Disneyland would have its own Matterhorn bobsleds. Tony Baxter said in an interview that the park was designed with key spaces at the back of each area so that there would be space to put major attractions in each land. The Matterhorn was originally planned to be right behind the Fantasyland station. While there's no concept art for this attraction specifically, there is one for Peter Pan's flight, which shows a very recognizable mountain lurking over the land. We don't know a lot of details about this attraction, but it's safe to assume that it would be a new version of the original with new and smoother tracks. Unfortunately, I have to remember that this is a cancelled attraction video, and this was never built, probably due to budget concerns, but who knows, 
one day that Fantasyland expansion slot will be used. So could we see a Matterhorn emerge in the back of the land? Let's now go to the depths of the jungle in Adventureland and explore another attraction that never was. Between Pirates of the Caribbean and Indiana Jones, Disney considered building a new roller coaster, this time themed around the Disney animation movie Tarzan. You would make your way through a base camp to get to the loading station. After boarding the cars, which we actually have a look at the seat, you would swing through an African jungle, with the famous treehouse from the movie at the top of the trees, being the centerpiece of it all. Waterfalls and rock work would immerse you in this world even more, and in this concept, it looks like guests would also be able to explore some of the area, similarly to what can be found in Adventure Isle, by climbing to the top of the remnants of the crashed ship. Tarzan never got its own ride, but this would be an amazing way to do it. The area where it was going to be built on is, well, still available. Well, I don't think another coaster would be the best type of attraction for that area specifically, since it already is Indiana Jones, I would still gladly take it. Let's stay in Adventureland for a little longer. In all the other Disney castle parks, excluding Shanghai, there is a version of the classic and very recognizable Jungle Cruise attraction. Guests are invited to enter a boat to explore the jungle, its animals, explorers and mysteries, all the while being narrated by the famous Jungle Cruise skippers and their funny sense of humor. When designing Euro Disneyland, Imagineers were planning on building a new version of the attraction, very similar to the Californian one, but the location shifted from time to time, sometimes being located in Frontierland and others in the place of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril. This painting made by John Horney in 1987 depicts the main building which would be different than the rest and exclusive to Paris. While the attraction ended up being scrapped, it was later used in Hong Kong Disneyland where it still exists to this day. Some people blame the language barrier or even the cold winters, but the true reason for it being scrapped is unknown. While the Jungle Cruise was never built, a similar ride ended up in the opening day slot of attractions, and that was the Frontierland Keelboats. Here, guests would be taken for a boat ride along the rivers of the Far West, while absorbing all the beauty the land had to offer, and being narrated by the skipper of the boat. The attraction unfortunately closed, due to safety issues and low capacity. But to this day, you can still look at the bloating platform and even take a sneak peek at the keelboat parked there. That is all for Disneyland Paris Cancel Attractions Episode 3. Which one would you like to see being built the most? If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and check out the other two episodes where I explore so many more scrapped projects. And now, as always, thank you to our patrons and to you for watching. And that's a wrap.